Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Friel, and I'm a faculty member here at Bellevue University. I'd like to talk to you for just a few minutes about a model of team development first proposed back in 1965 by Bruce Tuckman. Tuckman's model for team development describes how teams come together and start performing. He provides us with four different stages that we're going to talk about briefly here. These stages are what teams typically go through as they come together, learn what it is they're doing, and eventually start getting things done. The first stage is called forming. In the forming stage, team members come together for the first time. They get to know each other and they learn from the leader just exactly what it is that the team's been tasked with. They will learn what the goals or objectives are for the team and what product or outcome, if any, is expected from them. They may be a little unsure as to why they were invited to join the team. They may ask themselves, what strengths do I bring? How could I possibly contribute anything in this team setting? At this stage, there isn't really anything getting done yet. The second stage is called stormy. As you might guess, this is somewhat of a stormy period for team development. Once team members get to know each other, they try to figure out the pecking order of the team. Who has the power? As a team member, can I challenge the leader of this team? How am I going to be able to maximize my strengths in this team? There may be arguments about how to move forward, and during the storming stage, the team may become better focused on what the desired outcomes or the goals are for the team, but still, there's no performance or progression toward any of the goals yet. They still aren't functioning together. The third stage is norming. During the norming stage, there's an agreement as to each team member's role on the team and what they're responsible for. As a team, they learn what each other's strengths are and how they might function toward achieving the desired goals. There's a general respect for the leader and a clear understanding of the desired outcomes. In essence, the team is ready to function together, but again, they still aren't making progress towards the goals yet. Finally, in the performing stage, the team starts working together and progressing toward the desired outcomes. Generally, the teams are making decisions together, and although disagreements may occur, they are generally resolved within the team in a positive manner, which further contributes to positive outcomes. In high-performing teams, the team doesn't need to be instructed by the leader, who is generally seen as a resource at this point. Finally, the team is performing. One more stage that got added to the Tuckman model later on included adjourning. At this stage, team members have generally accomplished the goals they set out to meet, and they're ready to disband. But when you think about that, there's certain dynamics that come into play. Remember, there may be a high level of camaraderie that was created by working together, and now, someone is saying that we don't need to work together anymore. This can be tough on teams. There may be a certain level of disappointment and it could be an emotional time for team members. Keep this in mind as you work on your own teams. So, we have forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. In real life, teams can progress from forming to performing very quickly and with minimal guidance. These high-performing teams seem to come together and start functioning right away. On the other hand, some teams come together and are unable to ever make it to the performing stage. I'll give you an example, have you ever been involved with a team or a committee where it just seems like you're spinning your wheels? It just seems like you never get anything done? In that case, what stage do you think you're in? Chances are, you're somewhere in the norming or even the storming stages. The team is never really able to come together to start working on positive outcomes. Another issue affecting Tuckman's model includes changes to the team. In organizations, there's a lot of changes that affect how teams function. These could include changes in physical resources or technology, changes in budgets or financing, and even changes of personnel within the team itself. Let me give you a couple of examples. A well-functioning team in the performing stage is working towards some positive outcomes. However, let's say that some of the resources they are using get modified or removed. We usually hear this called doing more with less. It happens all the time. In this case, the team may revert back to the norming stage in an attempt to regroup and reevaluate how they will work together with limited resources. However, this may happen very quickly and they may move back into the performing stage in no time at all. In some cases though, this may throw off the team and they may not recover to make it back to performing. In another example, Let's say you have a high-functioning team which is built around shared interests and trust. As the team is working well in the performing stage, there's suddenly an unexpected change in personnel. One team member is lost while another new member is gained. What stage do you think the team may revert back to? 
they're probably going to go back to the forming or storming stages. They need to learn about the new team member and they also want to learn what is this new guy's strengths and where do they lie in the pecking order. What power does this new person have? What skills does this person bring to the team? It's possible that this can be resolved quickly and that the team moves back into the performing stage without any problems. However, you can probably see that there's potential for disrupting the team when certain resources, even human resources, change within the team. This has been just a short explanation of Tuckman's model of team development. I've added a couple of good articles at the end of the video so you can click on those and download them. Remember, there are several models of team development. Tuckman's is just one of those. I encourage you to explore other models and how they may or may not be reflective of teams in your organization. Thanks for your time.